Hi, welcome to 14 day weather forecast. We've had some amazing weather recently. In fact, in my locality, the skies have been almost cloudless for days on end. This is a picture I took recently. And if you look closely, you'll be able to see a second hot air balloon there. It's been quite incredible. But will things change as we head through the next two weeks? Well, in a word, I think the answer is yes, but let's take a look. Now, here's a view across Europe and the North Atlantic at 18 GMT on Tuesday the 8th. High pressure is dominating still, therefore it's dry in all areas. As I run the sequence, not a great deal changes in the short term. High pressure actually sinks southwards, but it's staying settled. But then, as the weekend approaches, there are signs of change beginning to take place. On Friday afternoon, for some outbreaks of rain, pushing into the northwest, and it's from here onwards that pressure starts to fall, and the risk of showers or long spells of rain increases in all areas through the weekend and into the early part of next week. This shows an area of low pressure, potentially bringing some heavy showery spells of rain northwards across much of the UK. But of course at this range there is a lot of uncertainty about the details. The jet stream and upper air temperature sequence shows things quite nicely. The UK is just here. To begin with we've got the area of high pressure and there is some warm air aloft in the short term. But later on the jet stream strengthens and it sinks southwards and with the dip in it, we've got an area of low pressure sitting in the trough close to the United Kingdom. So the potential at least for a significant change to take place through the second half of the first week. Let's see some of the forecast charts for conditions that we can expect to experience. These are for Wednesday afternoon. At this point, the warmest conditions are in the west of Britain and Northern Ireland because we've got the winds coming in from the east, the northeast. But the key thing is that it's dry with long sunny periods really everywhere. It's just maybe in eastern counties of England, eastern Scotland, where there could be some more cloud moving in at times. Forwards to Thursday, at this point, temperatures have actually increased 21 Celsius in northeastern Scotland and it's more or less sunny everywhere. By Friday, there are some signs now of things starting to change. If you look in the far north, a band of rain is arriving. Elsewhere though, it's a, it's a fine day and it's a warm one too, 21, 22. I wouldn't be surprised if somewhere sees 23 degrees in the south of Britain. Then as we go into the weekend, as I've already indicated, the change starts taking place. You can see the precipitation sequence here on the right has showery spells of rain moving south eastwards. With that said, it's still a dry picture in central and eastern counties. It's still a warm one as well, 21, 22, but it's turning cooler as you head northwards and westwards. Sunday and Monday, using data from a different uh, computer model, the GFS, because the previous one which I was using the UKV doesn't go that far ahead. Shows, shows things uh, changing as well. Sunday there are showers or long spells of rain affecting much of the UK. On Monday, according to this at least, it's a drier picture. It's still quite a warm one actually in central and eastern counties. You can see 19 degrees, 18 degrees in the southeast and east Anglia. Of course, as I've said, by this point the details become uncertain. In the short term, there will still be some chilly nights despite the pleasant sunny conditions through the days. Wednesday morning, Friday morning, patchy frost is still a concern for gardeners, even in the south. Here's the temperature trend using the Mogreps um, G Ensemble, which is run by the UK Met Office. The graph here is for London. You can see that through the first few days, there is an upwards trend and then it starts to dip but with that said the spread increases later on as the individual runs within the ensemble start showing different outcomes that's the way things are as you look further ahead of course because those small changes early on become magnified the further ahead that we look rainfall using mogreps g for london well 
there are no spikes at all through the first three or four five or five days but then from around the 13th of April a number start to appear which just should suggest that the chance of rain is increasing as I've been discussing a transition to a more changeable pattern but in more general terms here are the rain forecasts for the first five days from the ECM and GFS models nothing of note anywhere apart from in the far northwest according to the ECM but then moving forwards to the 10-day period a change has happened uh, both models show significant amounts of rain in parts of the UK. There is some uncertainty about the distribution, although it looks like northwestern parts of Britain, the southwest, and maybe more widely across southern counties, are the areas which are most likely to see significant amounts of rain through the day five to day ten part of the forecast period. In more general terms, how do the deterministic models compare with each other as we head towards the end of the first week? Are they all signalling a change? Here's the GFS on Tuesday the 15th, low pressure close to UK. It's, I think it's worth noting though at this point there are some indications that it could still be quite warm in central and eastern counties. It's often the case in my experience that when you've got these areas of low pressure they end up sitting just far enough west to allow warm air to filter up into central and eastern counties of England, at least for a time. The Canadian model, fairly similar. The German icon and the European ECM, there are some differences in the details as ever, but once more there is the suggestion that we could have some warm air being pulled up ahead of that area of low pressure into eastern counties of England. The artificial intelligence a version of the European model, similar. Finally, the UK Met Office Global. This has the area of low pressure pushing further eastward, so that warm air is shunted away, and it's a showery picture, I suppose, across all parts of the UK. Now, taking them together, the signal is quite strong for a change to take place towards the end of the first week. High pressure moves away, it declines, areas of low pressure come into play, the chance of showers or long spells of rain rises. And there is a suggestion with that warm air ahead of the area of low pressure that we could see some warm sunny periods in the southeast and East Anglia even towards the end of the first week. In fact, perhaps more widely so, but the chance of heavy and maybe thundery showers. What happens as we go through week two? Does that more changeable pattern continue or is high pressure going to return? Well, of course, at this range, it's just about the trends and the probabilities, but let's have a look. Now, here's a 16-day GEFS ensemble plot for London. 850 HPA temperatures across the top. The thick purple line the ensemble mean is staying above the thick black line for most of the period. So the idea is that most of the runs are going for above average temperatures aloft at about 1500 meters above our heads. There are a number of rain spikes, particularly early on, but it's worth drawing attention to the fact that their number decreases from around the 19th or the 20th, so possibly starting to turn more settled later on according to this. The two meter temperatures, the maximums and the minimums, there isn't a strong trend here. Despite 850 HPA temperatures starting to dip, there isn't, that isn't really been reflected in the two meter temperatures over once which we actually experience. If anything, it looks reasonably warm through the second week, or maybe better to say above average because it is still only the middle part of April. But the yellows there, 11s to 15s, the oranges 16s to 20s. For nighttime values, 6 to 10 degrees is the dominant theme because that's indicated by the light green. Later on, the amount of dark green increases. Those are runs going for lower values between 1 and 5. And that could just be suggesting that drier conditions are returning, the chance of clear periods through the night is increasing. Up to Manchester, it's a similar story. Although the risk of rain is perhaps remaining higher through the second half of the second week than it was in London, the two meter temperatures for Manchester 
not following any particular trends either, but no great changes through the second week. I would say here close to or above average through the days being favoured. And up to Glasgow, the 850 HPA temperatures are slightly above the average, but the anomaly here is less than it was in Manchester and London. And the risk of rain is ongoing, although perhaps there are more spikes through the first few days than there are later on, but once more, there isn't a strong trend showing up there. And the two metre temperatures for Glasgow, the yellows, 11 to 15s through the days, the nights, lots of dark green, so a greater chance here of uh, ground frost, also still a chance of air frost. It's possibly, it could just be ensemble scatter and spread as we move forwards, but there could be some signs here as well of more settled conditions returning because there's some orange through the days, those are runs going for between 16 and 20. Also the amount of blue shading increases, those are the ones going for sub-zero temperatures through the night. So that would be supporting the idea of drier conditions with sunny periods through the days and clear skies at night. Rainfall according to the ECM ensemble charts. These show the percentage chance of five or more millimetres of rain falling on the first three days of the second week. The green shading is around 40%, so that is a good deal higher than has been the case recently. The other point of note is the green shading isn't just focused on western parts of the UK, it's quite distributed around the country, which would suggest that rather than having a flat westerly flow, we could well be seeing slow moving areas of low pressure sitting close to the United Kingdom with showery conditions developing as a result. Moving forwards to the following three days, and what's happened is the green shading has reduced in quantity, the chance therefore of wet conditions is lowering, perhaps because high pressure is starting to become more influential. Another weak signal that high pressure and drier conditions may start to return through the second half of the second week. Is that supported by the mean surface level pressure data table from the GEFS model for York? So this one's going through the second week. To begin with, there's lots of green shading in the columns. Those are runs which are dominated by low pressure areas, but the amount of yellow grows, as does the amount of orange. It's not a very strong trend at this point, but definitely something going on here, which indicates that it could be turning more settled through the latter part of the second week. High pressure could be coming back into play. The snapshot mean surface level pressure chart from the GEFS model for Friday the 18th, quite mixed. High pressure centered to the south of the UK, maybe quite changeable at this point. And that's also the case with the, G, uh, with the ECM ensemble. If anything, there's more of a dip close to the UK and low pressure sitting in it, of course. And that would point towards a greater chance of showers or even a longer spells of rain. So, Maybe the ECM ensemble isn't as keen as the GEFS to bring back more settled weather later on. Hence, a lot of uncertainty about whether or not that will develop. So, to summarise, week one, it's fine across the UK for the first few days. Daytime temperatures rise, but the nights stay quite chilly. Through the weekend, the chance of heavy showers or longer outbreaks of rain begins to grow. Week two, changeable with a risk of showers or longer spells of rain. There could well be some warm sunny periods though, particularly in the southeast. And there is that signal for it to start turning drier and more settled towards the end of the period. So, there we have it. A change is on the way. The, the risk of showers along as part of rain returns, but uncertainty about just how much rain there will be, the distribution of it, and how long the more mixed conditions will last for. The computer models are 
pointing towards the possibility at least of it turning more settled later on with high pressure beginning to build. With that said, sometimes once more changeable or unsettled patterns become established, they can remain around for longer than the computer models initially predict. So it's going to be interesting to see exactly how things shape up. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video and found it useful. As ever then, if you did, please consider hitting the like button below and subscribing to the channel if you haven't done so already, because of course you'll never miss any of my future updates if you do that. Also, stay up to date with the day-to-day -day weather developments by checking out the weatheroutlook.com website. Thanks very much now. Bye.